Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on SDTM programming with R for clinical SAS programmers. In this series, we will see how to implement key SDTM programming concepts using R. We will take a quick look at the SAS program for the same concept and then see in detail about the R program. Please note that the complete explanation of this SAS program is available in a separate playlist. I will leave the link for it in the description of this video. In this video, we will see how to create RFP ENDTC in SDTM demographics data set. So RFP ENDTC is being derived as a last known date value across all date variables in all the data sets in this lesson. So some specification authors of SDTM may prefer directly assigning it as the equivalent of end of study day from a disposition page. But there can be cases wherein we may have to pull all the date values and then fetch the latest value. So we will be using that approach in this video. So here on the left hand side of my screen, so you see the SAS program that is used to generate the RFP and DTC. And on the right hand side, you see the R program that will be used to generate the SAS data, RFP and DTC using R. So we'll quickly go through the SAS program and then try to understand the logic and then we'll see how to replicate it in R. So what we do here in SAS is when we want to fetch the last known date value across all date variables in all the available data sets. So we will have to append all the data sets and then we'll, we know that the date variable names can be different in different data sets. We want to fetch them into a same named variable. For that what we are doing here is we are appending the data sets one per, once per each raw date variable and then renaming them to a common variable named date so that in the final all dates 01 data set we'll have all the date values in this date variable across all data set here in this case say for example in adverse events data set we have start date and end date of adverse event so we are appending it twice so when we come to this data set called enrollment we have three date variables one for informed consent one for enrollment date and the other one for randomization date so we'll have to append it thrice and use the uh, corresponding date variables once on each of these cases and then after appending these dates so what we need to do is we need to convert the raw date values into ISO 8601 representation so some programmers directly tend to convert uh, the date value into numeric and then try to fetch the latest so but there can be cases wherein during the follow-up there can be uh, some partial dates which could be the latest so in if that is the case if we convert try to convert it into numeric we may miss those records because they are partial in nature so the best approach is to convert them into iso 8601 uh, as they are in character format if the partial date itself is the latest date we'll still have to use that date for rfp and dtc so we'll be converting that into iso 8601 notation and then after that, what we do is we sort the data based on subject, study, patient and date in ascending manner. When we sort the dates in ascending manner, we know that the latest date will be available on the last record of that uh, subject. So we are picking the last record for that patient and then assigning the ISO date value uh, variable containing the ISO 8601 format date value to RFP and DTC and then keeping only the required variables. So this is the approach that we can use to derive uh, RFP and DTC using SAS program. So the approach in R is also similar. So we'll try to see how to replicate it in R. So let's have the R tidyverse program here on the left hand side and then I will have the intermediate data sets open here on the right hand side. So here I have I am loading some of the packages from R, but the main uh, functions that we'll be using from tidyverse package. So here I am loading my input data sets. My input data sets are stored in a program uh, called uh, with this name in a R program. So this is kind of equivalent to our percent include statement in SAS. So wherein you can run the code from a different program within another program. So source function is equivalent to percent include. And what we are doing here in the next step is, so we are pooling all the date values into a single data set. So we are creating a data set called all date 01. 
by using bind rows. So in order to append data sets in the SAS data step, so what we have used is a set statement and we have listed all the data sets on the set statement which we want to append. At the same time, we also have renamed and also used keep is equal to option to keep the required variables. So we'll have to replicate that here in R. So how are we doing that here is, so here we are using adverse event data set as input and passing it into select function to select only the required variables. So here, if you see, we are considering study PT and AEST DAT raw. And on the second row, if we see, we are using AE and DT raw. And if let's go back to this first line. So we are using adverse event data set as input and then selecting the required variables. And at the same time, we wanted to rename the date values into a same named variable. So here we are using rename function to rename AESTDT draw to date. So one important thing to note is, so we are used to that in rename is equal to option or rename statement. We specify the old variable name on the left hand side and new variable name on the right hand side in SAS. But here in R rename function, we'll have to specify the new variable name on the left hand side and the old variable name on the right hand side. So here, this line of code is now fetching the data from AESTDAT raw. And in the next line, we are fetching the data from AEENDAT raw of adverse events data set. So note that all of these data sets are now kind of separated with a comma. So all these entire selecting data set, keeping required variables and renaming it to the required or common variable is happening as part of that argument itself. It is kind of nested function. So here we are passing all the data sets and all the date variables accordingly. And then we are creating this all date 01. So this is how the data set looks like. So all date 01 has all the date values across all the subjects in this data set from all the data sets and date variables. So in the next step, what we need to do is we need to convert the raw date value to ISO 8601 format. So in a previous lesson, I have covered in detail about how to convert raw date values to ISO 8601 format. So but the quick flow is to uh, extract the components of like you, if you here, if you see in the raw date values, the values are like day followed by hyphen followed by three character month followed by the year. So we'll have to extract these individual components and then convert them into uh, ISO 8601 notation. Say for example, if we do not have a leading uh, zero when the day is from one to nine, we'll have to add that. And then uh, for three character months, we need to convert it to 0102 and all the way till 12 for December from beginning at 01 for Jan. And then we'll have to extract the year component. So this is what we are doing in this step. So if you want to take a look at the explanation of the code in detail, I suggest you to watch the previous video where it is clearly explained each of the line of code, which is used to create ISO 8601 step, uh, data date. So we are creating the date value to ISO 8601 in this step. So let's take a look at all date 02. So here we have extracted the components and made the transformation and then creating this variable called DTC. So which is, uh, which holds the ISO 8601 notation of the collected date. So if you see here, the date is UN and then month is March and 2010. So the ISO 8601 representation of it is 2010-03. So this is how we have converted it. And then, so in the next step, what we have done in SAS is to sort the records based on subject ID and date and pick the latest date value. So here in the next step, what we are doing here is creating a data set named RFP and DTC by using all dates 0 to data set and then passing it on to filter function. So to filter the records in which DTC is not null. So we are filtering the records in which DTC is not null by making use of filter function. So, and then passing the filter data set to the arrange function. So, which is equivalent to our proc sort in SAS. And then we are arranging the uh, records based on the values of study, PT and DTC. So, if we do not specify the keyword descending, so the variables get sorted in ascending manner like in SAS proc sort. 
So and then we are grouping the records based on study and PT. So it's kind of equivalent to our by statement within a data step. So we are grouping the records based on study and PT and then we are making use of slice function to subset the last record within each subject. So slice function is used for subsetting a record based on its position. So when the n function actually returns the number of records in each group. So we have sorted the data based on subject PT and DTC. So n function would return the last uh, the count of records in that uh, group and when we subset by that uh, n function so we get the last record within each group which is contains actually the latest date available across all date values in within a patient. So and then we are renaming the date value to RFP and DTC and then keeping only the required variables study PT and RFP and DTC. So this is how we can create or replicate the concept of creation of RFP and DTC using R program. So let us take a look at the RFP and DTC data set here. So I'll also try to open the data set which I have which got created using SAS program which I have shown earlier. So here if we see for first subject it is 0101 2010 so which is 1st Jan 2010 for second subject is 5th Jan and for third subject it is 5th Jan and for fourth it is 28th Feb and 5th 22nd Feb 25th March and 12th June and 18th August so both the values are now matching so this is how we can make use of R to get or create RFP and DTC program in HTTM demographics domain. Thank you for watching and keep learning.